just worship the King of Kings. He's Yahweh, His name is Jehovah. He has been faithful throughout the week. He has brought us into this house this morning only by His mercies and His grace this day. Father, we bless you this morning. We exalt your name. We say, Lord, that there is no other God like you. We call you Yahweh in this house today. We call you Elohim, oh God. We call you Nisi. We lift you up a banner of praise in this house. A banner of worship, King of our glory. May you receive it this morning even as we continue, Lord, to worship and adore you, to praise your name, oh God. The reason we came today, oh God, is just to meet with you, oh God. At the end of this soul, may you receive all the glory. May you receive all the honor. We bless you this day. We declare that you are Yahweh in this house. You are Elohim. You are Adonai in this place. We exalt you today, Jesus. We say that, Lord, you are the God. From beginning to the end, there is no other God. We worship you, Jesus. You are the God who was and is and is to come. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus 
Bwana asifiwe. Good morning this beautiful Sunday morning and I welcome you to this uh, worship service today and I want you to help me welcome your neighbor and your and tell them uh, welcome to the house of God. Welcome to the house of God. Um, on behalf of our bishop, I want to welcome you once more to this worship service. Uh, our bishop is not with us this morning. He's on an assignment uh, in California. So let's remember him as we start our service and pray that the grace of God will be upon him as he serves this mighty God in California. I want to take this opportunity also to welcome any guests that may be with us today. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, please sit, stand up so that we can acknowledge you. And you tell us your name, where you come from, and probably also who has invited you to the service. Do I go first? Okay. okay. My name is Pastor Lawrence Gachara. Mago is my third name. And uh, I'm from Kenya. I think I invited myself, but I came with my brother Alan, Margo. Yeah, I had a desire to worship with you, and uh, God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, my name is Jason David uh, from Kenya, Kiambu County, and uh, I was invited by Waichitu Washira. And I'm very happy to be here. And uh, thank you so much for welcoming me here. Are you Bashara? My name is Gloria. I'm from Nigeria. I was invited here by my client, Guy Walton. Praise God. Praise God. My name is Jason Ritu. From Kenya, I come to see my new chair, the girl, uh, my cousin. I'm from Kenya, Kenya. Thank you. Thank you for choosing to worship with us, and uh, we shall sing your song, a uh, welcome song. Welcome, and after the service, uh, please join us for a cup of tea. Uh, is there any celebrations or any uh, anniversaries that you want us to take note of this morning? No celebrations and no anniversaries. Um, do you have any joys or any uh, concerns that you want us to remember today? And as you mention them, uh, we're going to have our word. Our prayer will be led by SK and uh, Mary of SK. So if there's anything that you want us to pray for, please stand up and let us know. Let's recite our psalms of, oh, sorry.
verses. Uh, so let's all stand up and recite uh, Psalms 40, um, 1 to 5. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set up my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of the joy of God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put his trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. He was welcomed those who turn aside the false gods. Many you have so, they are with you. For I to speak and tell the good deeds, they will be too many to declare. Amen. So let's sit down and uh, come forward and let us bring our, our concerns to the Lord. He shall hear us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. 
Thank you for gathering us in your house this morning, my God. I thank you, God, for everything that you've done for us, my Lord. Father, many have testified of your goodness this morning, my Lord. Many have gone for a journey, Lord, and you have protected them and you have watched over them, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, I thank you for preserving the lives of your people. Thank you for preserving the life of Alice, my father. Oh, God, you so high in that accident, God. And my father, she came out saved, Lord. We give you praise. We give you worship, my father. We adore you and we honor you, my God. For them that traveled, my Lord, you watch over them, Lord. Thank you for watching over the key service, my father. Thank you for watching over Fidelis, my Lord. As they traveled home and came back, you are with them, Lord. Thank you for comforting them, Lord. Thank you for less calling them, my Father. We give you worship this morning. We adore you, my God. Thank you for Brother Malelu, my God. I thank you for you are the one who was with him, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done for your people. We bless you and amen. We honor you, God. This morning, we humbly come before you. Father, pleading for mercy. God, we come confessing, God. There are many things that you have done that are not pleasing before you, God. And Jehovah, we have come calling unto you for many things, my Lord. But this morning, God, I come asking for just three things, Lord. For just three things, my Father. One is forgiveness, Lord. That Jehovah, you may forgive us, Lord. My Father, the second, my God, is mercy, Lord. That you may have mercy upon your people, my God. And Jehovah, I come asking for your help, Lord. For we cannot do without you, my Father. We need your guidance, Lord. We need your mercy, Lord. We need your protection, Jehovah. My God and my Father, we come asking you, God, to direct our paths, Lord. We come asking you to lead us and to guide us, Jehovah. For we have gone astray, my Lord. We have gone against your ways, my Lord. We are the same people who abuse the very own Jehovah that you have given us to take care of, Lord. We are the same people who neglect them that you expect us to take care of, Lord. You are the Lord, my Father, who have brought us here with a reason and with a purpose, Lord. And Jehovah, we have failed to go in your ways, Lord. Father, have mercy upon us this morning, God. Have mercy, my Lord. We come lifting our children before you this morning. Father, we thank you for that you love them. We thank you because you care for them, Lord. Jehovah, I thank you because they are such a blessing in our lives, my Father. And this morning we come crying for you, God, that you may have mercy upon them, my Lord. Some don't even know how to pray for themselves, my God. And this morning I study the gap on behalf of our children, Lord. Young or old, oh my God, you know them by their names, my Father. Them that are in school, my God, I pray that you may continue to see them, God. My Father, them that are working, my God, I pray. May you continue to watch over them, my God. As they go out and as they come in, my Father, may your presence go with them, my Father. Jehovah, my Lord and my Redeemer, I come against every power of the enemy that have listened against our children, Lord. We come crying, my God, for mercy, that you may cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. As they go out and as they come in, my Father, may your mercy be upon them, my God. May you lead them in your ways and guide them, my Father. May you direct their paths, oh God. May you help them to become the children that you call them to be, my Father. How we pray that your purpose will be accomplished in their lives, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, I come against every spirit of drunkenness, my God. I come against every spirit of drug abuse, my God. I come against every spirit of immorality, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call our children blessed, my Lord. And we declare that no weapon fashioned against them shall prosper. My God, every attack of the enemy against their lives, my Lord. We come declaring that they are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And my Father, we declare that our children shall be mighty in the Lord, oh God. And no power of the enemy shall prevail of their lives, my Father. For you know them and you have called them by their names, my Lord. We pray that you may watch over them, my 
Father. Them that have gone astray and learned out of your house, my Lord. Father, we call them back to your house, my Lord. We call them back to your first love, oh God. Hallelujah, have mercy, my Father. Oh God, bless our homes this morning, my Lord. Jehovah, minister to our homes, my Father. Minister to our needs, oh God. Any need that is presented here this morning, God. Jehovah, you know everyone by name, Lord. You know our needs, my God, before we even mention them before you. And this morning, Jehovah, I pray, may you meet us at the point of our need this morning, God. Oh, hallelujah, we give you worship. We give you praise, Lord. We humbly come asking God that you direct our path, oh Lord. This beginning of the year 2020, Lord, we release ourselves to you, uh, telling you that we cannot make it on our own, Lord. We cannot lead ourselves, my Father. We need your direction, God. We need your instructions, my Father. May you order our steps, my God, every day, every minute, and every hour. And help us, my Father, to walk in your ways, my God. And help us to become who you have called us to be, my Jehovah. Thank you for this, your house, oh God. Father, we commit it to you, God. We commit your children to you, Father. Some have unspoken needs, oh God. You only can see them and you alone know it, my Lord. I pray that you may minister to your children, Jehovah. Anyone that is going through a hard time, my Lord, I know you are able to bring them out, my Father. Anyone that is going through any form of sickness or disease, my Jehovah, we know you are our healer, my God. We know you are our deliverer, my Father. Come and deliver your children children this morning, God, all to the honor and glory of your name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy, Jehovah. We bless your name and we worship you. And we declare that you alone is our God. We release ourselves to you that you may minister to us this day. May you guide us, Lord. May you minister to us and have your way. We love you and we bless you. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Oh. And now our Father, who is that in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Oh, that is who you are. I'd request all of us to stand. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, we call, we call, we call. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God. darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. We say that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. I say. Rock. 
miracle work, promise keep, light the darkness, my God, that is who you were. Uh, this morning, we are going to hear our uh, the word uh, from our apostle. Uh, John Camby, so please help me welcome Apostle John Camby. Praise God, everybody. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, my name's uh, Apostle John Camby, and uh, my wife is not here today. She's working, and it just happened the day I'm supposed to be preaching is the day she's working. And then she was thinking about calling out, and that would have been a lie. And she's one of the people who keeps on telling me not to lie, you know. If you're in the bathroom and you have not prepared and you haven't left the house, tell the person you have not left the house. Don't tell them you are on the way. <laughs> Amen. She's the one who catches me when I'm, uh, when I'm invited somewhere and I say, oh, tutakuja. And we know very well we have other plans. And she tells me, just tell him the truth. It's easier. Amen. Somebody say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today uh, we are going to uh, when you uh, we are going to talk about um, a sermon that was given uh, a sermon on the mount. The sermon on the mount is covered from the books of Matthew five to seven. In the book of Matthew five to seven. It begins by Jesus. It says, now Jesus uh, was, saw the crowd coming. And he went to the sound, side of the mountain and he sat down. And his disciples followed him. And he started to teach them. Yeah, this sub, uh, sermon of the mount, he talked about the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are blessed. Blessed are the poor in the spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the ones who mourn, for they will be comforted. Amen. He talked to them and said, we or you are the salt of the world, and you are the light of the world. So let your light shine. Amen. He talked to them about uh, the fact that I did not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill the law. He talked about murder. He talked about divorce. He talked about oaths. He talked about uh, 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 um, judging others. He talked about fasting. He told them about fasting. He talked to them about even giving. He said, when you give, let not your left hand, le right hand know what the left hand has, has done. He talked about uh, worrying. He said, even if you worry, even you, you will cannot add a single hour to your life. Amen. He talked about the false and the true prophets. He talked about the false and the true disciples. He talked about uh, uh, many other things. And towards the end, he talked about the wise and the foolish builders. But this morning, we are going to cover about the uh, judging others. Amen? It, we are going to talk about judging others because that is one of the sermons that were, uh, that is one of the things he talked during that sermon on the mount. And our reading for today comes from Matthew 7, from 1 to 7. I think there's a part I skipped, and I really wanted to mention that, uh, about he said that an eye for an eye, a tooth for a 
But God says, when somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. That's ouch. That's tough, right? That you can turn your other cheek. I think that is really tough. But that is the word of God. That is exactly what the word of God expects us to do. Matthew 7, 1 to 5 says, my, the title on my uh, uh, Bible says, judging others. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the same measure you use, it will be used to you. Why do you look at the speck of dust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Some versions say the log on your own eye. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck of, uh, out of your eye and all the time you, there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrites, this is what Jesus says, for take out the plank out of your eye and then you will see clearly and remove the speck from your brother's eye. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we are praying for this word. Let it be used to edify your name. Let we use this word so that this man and even myself can be blessed from it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. amen. Do not judge or you will be judged. These are very familiar words to so many people. This is not something a lot of people do not know about. This verse is a lot of times misused or, and also misunderstood. It is always used out of context. And a lot of people take it this, use this verse to say, my brother, my sister, stop judging or stop judging me if they have made a mistake. My brother and sister, if I have made a mistake, leave me alone. Hallelujah. There, it has been used a lot of times against people's critics to say this is what God says. Don't judge me. Don't even if I have made a mistake, do not count me. Do not use those words against me. Do not, you have no right to tell me I am wrong. Amen. So, uh, a lot of people, uh, so does this re words really mean that we cannot judge others? Uh, does this verse really mean do not judge others, draw conclusion about them? Does it mean people can do whatever they really want to do? Is it all between them and their God? Is it all, uh, 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 do they not have an account to the rest of the people all around us? Don't they have to, don't we have a say towards what is going on? And God reminds us, a lot of people believe that is exactly what it is. Do not judge me. Leave me alone. Wachana na mi? Eh, wachana na mimi. The word of God is true. And anything else is a lie. Theft or murder is a sin. And we have to agree with God. When Jesus said not to judge others, it did not mean that no one can identify sin for what it is based on God's definition of sin. We are required to judge or evaluate one another objectively, fairly, and with balance. The fair, uh, be fair in your judgment. The standard that you are willing to, to be judged by. Use that standard. That standard you are willing to be judged by, use that one. Do not use a teaspoon, a teaspoon, to judge others, but you expect God to use the entire, the, this entire sanctuary, the size of this entire, to give you that grace. When you use a teaspoon on other people, expect the teaspoon will be used unto you. Amen? Yes. Amen? So let, if you expect the grace of God to be as big as this uh, sanctuary, then use the same kind of grace for others. Amen? Yes. Amen. Before you point a finger, at somebody, first point three fingers at yourself. And you put yourself in the circumstances of that person. Put yourself in that situation. Before you point a finger. A lot of times we are very quick to point fingers and say that person, eh, yeah, ooh, they are not doing very well. But you are not looking at yourself. And today we are here to learn and to remind ourselves before you point the finger, point three fingers. 
Look at yourself attentively in the mirror and ask yourself, if I was in this situation, if this happened to me, what would I do? What exactly would I do? Would I be in the same situation? Would I be the one screaming at that person? Would I be the one uh, telling? We are even reminded in the book in Genesis where the, uh, Adam told God, well, it is not me. We are very quick to, you know, to sidestep things. It is the woman who gave me the fruit and I ate. Amen? We are very quick to send the blames away. There are many passages that talk about about judging others. There is passages that tell you it's okay to judge. And there are passages that say do not judge. And or do not judge in the wrong way. So this morning we are going to look at the wrong way. The wrong ways we judge people. And we need to rectify that. Including myself. First of all, I'm not pointing a finger at you. Hey, I am pointing a finger at myself first of all. Because I'll give you a good example. The other day, there was somebody who was saying they are fasting. They were sitting in a conference with me side to side. I was also fasting. She, uh, she had brought a bowl of vegetable, and she was eating, you know. And then in my heart, I'm saying, is this person really? <laughs> I've already judged that person, right? I've already? Because it is about, yes, I might be fasting, but am I even reading the word of God? Am I even, you know, praying? But that person, yes, may be fasting, eating their vegetable, doing the Daniel fast, but they are praying. Have I done that? Amen? We are very quick to judge, and that is why we are here today to talk about judging others. So the first important part about the wrong way we can judge it is appearing, appearance judgment. Appearance judgment. Appearance judgment is wrong. Passing judgment on someone based solely on appearance is a sin. John 7, 24 says, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Jesus said, do not judge, and then tells us how to judge with righteous judgment. What is righteous judgment? Uh, Psalm 9, 8 says, and he will judge with the whole world with righteousness. He will execute judgment for the people with equity. Means the righteous judgment is objective. Meaning the righteous judgment is balanced. Meaning the righteous judgment is fair judgment, equity. It is not biased. It does not distort the truth. It is not right to jump into conclusion before you inv investigate the fact. And a lot of times that is what we do. We jump to a conclusion. Even before you know the entire story, you have already made a judgment and you have already condemned that person. Amen? So this morning, before you uh, make a conclusion, get the full story. I had one boss that we worked with. You would go and bring your, your case to that boss and he'll tell you, okay, I've had you. Okay, go call your friend so that we can resolve this. So that he can hear this story and hear this story. Because now you have told him your side of the story, it could be all fabricated. And this, uh, so uh, also, when you walk on the streets of Atlanta, you might see a beggar. And we are very quick to say, who you, whatever the, you call him, why can't they go and work? They are strong, you know. And a lot of them, they could have lost their job because they had depression. They had an accident. They were sick, you know. That is, you know, we are all maybe two checks, three checks away from being homeless. And we know it. So when you find somebody on the street, don't start pointing fingers at them and saying, hey, uh, uh, they, they, they should work better or they should work. Some of them are going through tra post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome. And they were veterans fighting for this country. And they are not getting the medication they are supposed to get. And that's why they are out there. They cannot hold a job because of those stress that they go through. Amen. So Jesus is cautioning us not about blindly judging others. Amen. Amen. Let's, not, let's not use the appearance to judge us. There, there's a, there's a, an English word that talks about do not judge a book by its cover. This, uh, this is an ad, a, idiom used in English. That means do not prejudge the value or the cost 
of something before you know everything about it. Do not prejudge the value of something by the outer appearance only. Amen? Don't just look at somebody who already made a decision. Oh, this, I'm not even getting involved with this person. The next one I want to tell you. So we have talked about appearance, judgment. That's not good. I want to talk about hypocritical judgment. This is also wrong. Jesus says, do not look at the speck of dust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to your own. How can I? Let me demonstrate. How can I come to Timothy? Let me, let me, let me try and remove a speck out of you. Can I even see? Can I even see? So Jesus is telling us very easily. Remove the plank. Remove the log out of your eye. So that I can be able to remove the speck on our brother's eye. Amen. So Jesus calls us hypocrites. First, take out the plank out of your eye. And then you will see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. That is what Jesus is telling us. He's telling us in Romans 2, 1 to, 1 to 3, he says, You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at your whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself. Because who passes, uh, who passes judgment do the same thing. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you are a mere human being, pass judgment to them and yet do the same thing. Do you think you will escape God's judgment? Look at your own life first. If your life is full of immorality, you should, I should be the first person. I should not be the first person trying to condemn you. you, you sh first, you should fix your situation. Fix what you're going through before you can start harshly attacking other men and women. Number three, we have talked about hypocritical judgment. We first talked about appearance judgment. Third, harsh and forgiving judgment is also wrong. Using, use patience, patience in judgment. We are always to be gentle towards everyone. It is the merciful who will be shown mercy. And as Jesus warned, in the same way you judge others, you will also be judged the same way. The measure you use, it will be used unto you. If you want God to use his full mercy upon you, then you have to show mercy to other people. Remember this story about the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Jesus said, if you have never sinned, you be the first person to cast the first. And then he told, uh, and then after everybody, uh, the, the, old, the old ones started living first because they knew, okay, I have sinned before. Maybe I was just lucky I, I would be the person kneeling in front of Jesus or standing in front of Jesus. And then followed by the young ones. And then Jesus said, who condemns you? I don't condemn you. Go your way and don't continue to sin anymore. Amen? Amen. So before you judge, don't, don't use those harsh words. Think about it before you get to the conclusion. Self-righteous judgment. So we have covered about appearance, hypocritical judging, harsh and unforgiving judgment. Self-righteous judgment is also wrong. We are called to humility, and that God opposes the proud. Luke 18, 9, 14 says this. To some who, conf, uh, conf, confidently, who, sorry, to some who are confidently of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. He said two people went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other one a tax collector. Amen? The Pharisee stood on the side by himself. And he, he, this is how he prayed. God, I thank you because I'm not like other people. Murderers, sinners, 
evildoers, and even like that tax collector. Amen? That is how the Pharisee play, prayed. Look, look it up. Luke 18, 9, 14. It is there. Amen? And then the tax collector stood on the side. He could not even look up to heaven and beat his chest. And he cried to God. He could, he could not even, oh God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Forgive me. Have mercy on me. And Jesus said, this man, other than the other one, went on more justified than the Pharisee. Amen. He said that whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So let us be careful, ladies and gentlemen, that we do not practice our self-righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. The other thing, the, the last and final, uh, so that was self-righteous judgment. The last and final one is untrue judgment is wrong. The Bible clearly forbids bearing false witness, slandering no one. Christians are often accused of judging or intolerant when they speak out against sin, but oppose sin, opposing sin is not wrong. Holding aloft the standard of righteousness naturally defines unrighteousness and draws the slings around those who choose sin over godliness. John the Baptist incurred the rage of the Herodias when he spoke about their adultery with Herod. And we know in the book of Mark, Mark 6, 18, 19, she eventually silenced John, but she could not silence the truth. Let us always be truthful with what we do. We are to preach the whole counsel of God, including the Bible's teaching on sin. We are to practice church discipline. We are to be gentle when we confront our brothers and sisters cry on Christ who have made a mistake. We are to be sensitive with one another. We are to speak the truth in love. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this morning, Jesus is warning us against is judging others unfairly, unrighteously, but to use the right judgment of, of, of being objective, having balance, being fair, and following the truth. God bless you. Thank you so much, Brother John, uh, for reminding us about judging others and don't we love judging others. Tell your neighbor, do not judge others. Do not judge others. We love judging. Um, this uh, video... Uh, the bishop has sent us a video and uh, communication looks like they're not yet ready. So let's uh, prepare to give our tithes and offerings. And as we do that, the choir will give us a song. And I want to thank you so much for what you've been doing this year. January has been a great year. That's what the finance team tell me. And uh, before we even give our offerings and our tithings, because... We have been very obedient. I want Pastor Naomi to come and just say a prayer before we give because we have seen the power of prayer. He has touched so many and our books look different. So and as soon as communication is ready, they will let us know. And uh, please, Pastor Naomi, say a prayer for us before we give. Amen. It is so blessed to give than to receive. If you have your seed, you want to give it to God. Put your, put your seed in your hands that we may pray. That money that you give every Sunday, let me assure you, let me remind you, it is in the book of records. And one day your files will be open. And blessings, they will start moving in your life. And you will ask yourself, what did I do 
And the voice will tell you, you've been faithful. May the Lord bless you. Just, just raise your hand. Just put your seed in your hand. Like me, I do cash up. I always do cash up because, I, you know, the technology has changed a little bit. We have cash up number over there. Just do it unto the Lord. Our Lord and our Savior, we thank you because you've been faithful to us and to our family. Like now, as we stretch our hands to give in this ministry, in this noble job, we pray that God, your name will be magnified. Your name will go around being preached with what we are giving. And the ministries in this church will move tremendously in Jesus' name. The evangelists same. Even the children ministry, even the, the, the mission trip and anything that will be done with what we are giving to today and this morning will be of your great, great work in the ministry. We thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for what we have been giving in the past. Our elder told us that January has been a blessed January because your people have been faithful. Lord, as we continue to be faithful, let your name be glorified. Heal those who are sick. Touch those who are discouraged. Give the jobs to those who are looking for a job. And your name will be glorified. And it is in Jesus' name and the church say, Amen. Church family, thank you so much for coming to service today. I thank God for a wonderful word that you've just heard. It is time to give, my friends. And I want to thank God for your commitment in giving. And thank all of us who have answered to this call of tithing for the last few weeks. Remember all that you have, including yourself, belongs to God. So that as you give, give cheerfully, with a sober mind. And I want to tell you, it is not in vain that you give unto God. I know you have other priorities, but as you give, remember the blessings that God has given you. Back home, the things you've left. Outside, a car waiting and a job you have tomorrow and some of us today. Be grateful to this maker as you give. I want to read the word in Malachi 3.10 that says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me, this is what the Lord says, and see I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough to restore it. And I love verse 11. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit. Before it is ripe. Yani matuda hayata anguka kabla hajaiva. My friend, we have promises in giving. I pray that the Lord will bless you as you give. May he bless the works of your hand. May he bless your place of work. May he bless your family as you become faithful in giving 10% that belongs to God. May God bless you for your giving. Let us give. Let's wake up and give cheerfully with a very clear heart because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. God bless you and have a great week.
Thank you. 